So, my name is Shankar Prinja. I work at uh, PGI Chandigarh in School of Public Health. I work there as an assistant professor in health economics. So what I'm going to talk to you now is I'm going to tell you that all that you learnt in the first session was probably not applicable to health. <laughs> Although we were trying to apply all that we were discussing to health, it does apply actually. But then we have to also consider a lot of other caveats uh, which go alongside in the field of health. And that's going to be the focus of our session today. So if I just have a kind of recap, and this is what we studied in the last session. Basically, what is a market is basically a, an institution which is used to allocate your resources efficiently. And now what do you mean by res allocation of resources efficiently is that if, for example, I go to purchase a, a, a product in the market, let's say a cloth. So what do, what do you look for when you are to purchase a cloth? If you go to the market, what, what is it that you look at the, when you look at the cloth, uh, so what, what is it that comes to your mind? Uh, if you have to make a decision on the whether or not to purchase it. Price. 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 Okay, cost. Quality. Fits into my... Fits into you. <laughs> and okay. <laughs> so, so you fit into the cloth. And what, what else? What, what, what does a well-fitted cloth give you? Quality. Look. No, no, no. He's coming to the right thing. Comfort, comfort comes secondary. It is look, you know? Also the color. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. The color is also secondary. Look. Okay, that was the key word. And what does look lead to? Happiness, satisfaction, you know, you feel good, you're looking good. So this demand curve is actually an expression of those two things. The demand curve is the, is the expression of your benefit, what you feel, what happiness that you get. And, in, and in, as economists tend to use the word utility, what utility do you get with a given product? And then this supply curve represents the cost that you have to pay. So you try to match the two things, the benefit and the cost, sorry. And when you have, uh, when you have a agreement between the cost and the benefit, that means you're willing to pay this much to get this much benefit, that's when you make that transaction. So what the market does it, it throws open a, uh, a whole bunch of people who are there to provide you services. You go as a consumer there, and you tend to match how much benefits you are likely to get with a given product at a given price. And this is perfect uh, example of allocating the resources efficiently because you will neither pay more for a product which does not give you enough happiness or if he has more money, then he can pay more and he gets that particular product. So it matches your capacity to pay and it matches your, the amount of benefits that you get out of it or the utility that you get out of it. And that is why you have a lot of debate around having the role of markets in the healthcare as well. Why is it that we should have the government to, uh, to, to provide for healthcare services? Why not just leave it open? Let people provide, private players provide. If market is the best way to allocate resources efficiently, and as we are obsessed with the word efficiency, then let's leave it to the, to the, to the market. In the, if you look at some of those who are involved with the NRHM, there's a separate line item within the NRHM budget. If you look at that A.8.2, this is specifically how much budget do you want to allocate to PPPs. So explicitly it asks for kind of involving the private sector. There are so many state specific schemes which are going on. There, are, there was a Chiranjeevi scheme in Gujarat, you know, having the private sector to provide for delivery services, we'll pay you a lump sum rate for a delivery or for a cesarean section. We have privately provided referral transport services. 108 is a classical example. And then many other states also have this, you know, there are different private players who are operating these schemes, these uh, vehicles. There's a lot of debate about contracting in and contracting out of specialist services or even basic emer uh, emergency services or basic primary care services. So there are these kinds of debates. There's a whole range of uh, issues which have now cropped up with the introduction of these publicly financed health insurance schemes. RSBY, Rashtriya Swastha Bhima Yojana. So this is a scheme which, is, which provides health insurance to the ones who are below poverty line. So any hospitalization which, uh, so it is the whole household is insured and any, hosp any member of the household who is hospitalized during the period of one year can avail healthcare services up to a 30,000 limit. 
So 30,000 of hospitalization care is free of cost. And then who provides that care is a range of private and public healthcare facilities who are impaneled under this, uh, this thing. There are other state specific schemes. Maharashtra has its own scheme. Tamil Nadu has a Kalignar scheme. Andhra Pradesh has Arogya Shri scheme. Himachal Pradesh topped up the RSB by saying that 30,000 you provide will pay another uh, 1,50,000 from our side. So 30,000 is too less, we'll provide for 150,000 extra. And then who provides the care? The private sector provides. In most of the situations, a lot of uh, these providers or impaneled providers are the private sector providers. And obviously there is a third option. There's a whole range of incentives which are given to private pro providers to flourish. For example, you give land subsidy free of cost land or a land which is at a very subsidized cost. In Punjab, we have a very good thing. There is a district hospital and district and the next door neighbor is the max hospital. So already this was, you know, defunct kind of a facility. Now you create another facility. So you have uh, enough opportunities for people to, you know, compare, match and then see which tastes and preferences. So these are some of the issues that we are going to debate now in this session. How good or bad is this market? Or how good or bad is this private provision? And should we, and is there a, if, the, if that is the case, is there a role of government? If there is a role of government, then what should the government do? And whether the government is free of all the problems? You all listed just now so many problems with the government when you look at institutional deliveries. There were so many demand side problems, so many supply side problems. So this was the market equilibrium, the demand and the supply matches and the price sets at the point where you have the benefit of the consumer matching the cost of the consumer and the price is set at that point. These were the essential conditions which were listed uh, in the last slide of the previous lecture and you rightly said that information asymmetry is uh, one of the reasons which violates this first problem of perfect information. For that diagram to happen, the previous diagram, perfect competition and markets to provide the best solution uh, for healthcare, these essential conditions have to be met. Unless you meet these essential conditions, you will not have markets as the best solutions for provision of healthcare services. So now let's examine each of these conditions that what happens in healthcare market. So condition one is of an arrhythmia patient. Arrhythmia is for those who are uh, not from the medical speciality, it is a disorder of the conduction of the heart. So your heartbeat might be fast or slow. It might be slow, it might be fast. How many of us do, even the doctors, know the exact reason what causes arrhythmia? If you go with, uh, for, along with a patient of cancer, window shopping from door to door of a specialist, you know, one specialist will tell you, go in for radiation therapy. The other will say, no, 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 first surgery, then radiation. You go to a medical oncologist, he'll say, chemotherapy. There's no role of radiation. Think about surgery after I give chemotherapy. Now, what do I do? I don't know as a consumer anything at all. So the extent of information asymmetry is too huge in the case of health sector. And this leads to what is called as a principal agent relationship. That you as a consumer or as the principal, you, inv you invest all your faith and confidence in the doctor to take a decision on your behalf. So now the doctor is making a decision on your behalf. Believe me, if, if such a patient comes, there will be a hundred reasons for the doctor to convince the patient and the doctor will have no, and the patient would have no choice. He might have done 100 window shoppings and have collected a lot of information. When he comes to the doctor, you know, what the, the doctor will have just one thing to say. And that comes as the actually third thing. No, no, no. That comes as the, the violation of this third condition, homogeneity. You have headache and the third person had headache. There is no relationship between the two of you. He got better with a paracetamol, you will need an MRI scan. What answer do you have now for this? So higher the knowledge, more is the difficulty for you to obtain as a common person that kind of knowledge. You might come to know about the cars or the potatoes, but it is very difficult to know about what an anesthetist does inside a operation on, on an operating table. So that is the reason. So you, so the problem here is when you are 
uh, advising an MRI scan for a headache, what is the problem? Additional burden, Additional burden on? Health services. Exactly. You increase the cost of care. And what did we learn in the first lecture? The basic principles. One of the basic principles that an economist is al always obsessed with is achieving efficiency. Now, if you are providing the same care at higher cost, you are inefficient. So, the market through this principal agent information can essentially drive up the supply of, supply of services, which is called a supplier induced demand. So, you drive up those supply of healthcare services, products, and the same is happening with even diagnostics and technology. Tomorrow, a new technology comes up, they, a new molecule for uh, treatment comes up, and th that thing also comes in the market. It is basically driving up the cost of care. A thing which you were able to treat with 10 rupees of paracetamol, you have to now spend about 10,000 rupees on an MRI scan as well. This is inefficiency. So the markets through existing existence of an information asymmetry leading to supplier induced demand can lead to an inefficient allocation of resources. You have to spend much more on healthcare to get the same level of health back. Ultimate aim is to have relief of headache. For that, if you can do it with the PCM versus with the MRI as well as a PCM. So that is the problems which are created as a result of information asymmetry. The second condition was that you need large number of buyers and sellers. You pointed out one of the problems with uh, the supply side story in the previous session, shortage of staff. Shortage is for all the kinds of healthcare workforce start from doctors, nurses, paramedical workers and then to top it up there is skewed distribution. So, first is the absolute shortage and then there is a relative shortage at the level of the urban or the rural facilities. So, which leads to skewed distribution. What happens? What is the result of that? Now, this is the problem. What is the outcome of that problem? The outcome of that problem is setting up of monopolies. Less outcomes, less output with the same amount of money, which is inefficiency. inefficiency. So, whether it is through creation of supplier induced demand, which raises the cost at the same level of outcome, or you have the same level of cost, but then because of your monopolies, you have higher price. Some people who were earlier using this service are now not able to use because you raise the price. As a result, you created uh, inefficiencies. Plus, the other problem is, is from a social justice argument perspective that who are the ones who get excluded? Is it the rich or the poor? Is the poor people who get um, uh, excluded from the utilization of care. So, it becomes highly inequitable from that perspective that you are actually denying care to the ones who are or not only not just the poor, the aged, the women. Marginalized. So all those all those people who are marginalized were not able to fend off their needs. They are the ones who are get who are getting excluded from market because of setting up of these monopolies. So if the cardiologist says I want a lack of rupees for an angiography, you have no choice but to say okay and you pay off. But you are paying off because you had a capacity to pay. The one who did not have capacity to pay gets excluded. That is a welfare loss. That is inefficient and that is inequitable. So that's the violation of the second condition. The third condition is the homogeneity of product. In case of other goods that we were talking of in terms where perfect competition was still possible in some way like a vegetable market, you still have potatoes which look alike, tomatoes which look alike and you are very able very easily able to differentiate which is a good potato and which is a bad potato. You look at a banana and you know the size of the banana is good, it is not you know very soft, so this is a good one. But what about the, the extent of uh, heterogeneity in medical care? And this heterogeneity is at both the ends, it is at the consumer end and the supplier end. What do I mean by this consumer and supplier end heterogeneity? What I mean is there is a you know there is a normal distribution curve and the normal distribution curve is that a lot of people are in the center of this thing, but then there are people in the others in the on the either side of this 2.5 percent on this side 2.5. Medical care has a lot of people on these two sides. So, the range increases number one. Hypertension ranges from very less to very high. 
cancer ranges from stage 0 or in situ where you do not even have symptoms to a stage 4 where you have metastasis altogether. For a patient it is cancer, whether it is just diagnosed in the first stage or it is diagnosed at the last stage as long as it is clinically asymptomatic. Prostate cancer may manifest at a very late stage, you may not have any symptom whatsoever, but it has already affected the surrounding tissue also, the lymph nodes also, all those problems have already occurred. For a patient, this is also same versus if it was detected in a screening kind of uh, mode, where it was detected at a very early stage. So, heterogeneity at the consumer end is very large. At the supplier end, it is huge. A doctor with an MBBS degree might prescribe you a set of drugs, a specialist will provide you with a B set of drugs. Within the specialists, there are three sets of specialists who would provide you, who would you, I mean prescribe you with different sets of drugs and each one of them can justify it. So, for a, consu for, for a consumer, what is the problem? Each product is different. What problem does the consumer face in that case? Selection. Selection. He has no way to judge which is good and which is bad. So, whatever the provider says, he follows that. And the provider has all the, all the leeway to do whatever he wants. So, as a result, either he charges more or he provides substandard care. If he provides substandard care, you are poor on outcomes, inefficient. You are losing out on health because efficiency is not just cost. Remember, please look, some people think about efficiency means doing something at a lower cost. No. Efficiency is a comparison of both costs and outcomes. So, if you are not having the best health, that is also inefficient versus if you are charging more and getting the same health at a higher cost. So, this heterogeneity leads you to inefficiency through both those mechanisms. And the final is condition is free entry and exit for buyers and sellers. So, there is a right across your house, there is a there is a Karyana shop and which sells all kinds of routine products. Tomorrow you find that uh, option very lucrative as a business and if assuming that you have the money to set up a shop, would it be difficult to for you to start that business? Not at all. I have the money, I can purchase a shop, a booth and I purchase all the products to put up inside the shop and I sell it off. There is no barrier to entry for a new supplier. What about the field of healthcare? To start off with, no, any, any one person cannot come and open up a, uh, an ultrasound center or an x-ray center. Any person would not be able to start performing caesarean sections. You need a training and for that there is a barrier to entry. Not everybody can become. You get that through a p series of uh, screening examinations. Then you sit for another examination. And then as you go up the specialization ladder, that screening or that barriers to entry keep on increasing. You have large number of this uh, initial entry level MBBS, it goes down at the level of specialization, it goes even down at the level of super specialization. So, there are barriers to entry. Patent laws for drugs, again the same problem. You have patent laws, not everybody is able to manufacture the same drug once produced. So, now there is just one company who is producing this and that company is, re is setting its own price. And this as I said keeps on increasing with specialization. So, four essential conditions, we said off, we started off saying that these are essential for setting up of a perfect competition. All those four in some way or the other are getting violated in the field of health. So, this leads to what we call as the failure of market in health and the result is basically that the providers become price setters, suppliers become price setters rather than the market setting the price, which has problem of welfare loss, which has which makes it inefficient to allocate resources through this market and which is also inequitable because you push out the poorer people or the marginalized people out of the market. This brings us to the question of the role of government in the field of health. So, the first one we have discussed the market failure in health. Now, we come to some of the other arguments also, but let us start off from the first second one which is externalities. So, what is externality? Externality is 
So, so a positive externality would mean, so when you looked, you went to uh, buy that jeans, you, get, you went there, right? so you saw the, you, you put on the jeans, it fitted very well to you and you had, uh, you had a sense of happiness, in my terms I would say utility, isn't it? This is your personal utility. So you matched the personal utility with the personal cost and you made a decision to buy. And this is where you were on the, on the curve of supply and demand. What if you were going to get a vaccination done for a communicable disease? When you go to get a vaccination done, you get a, uh, you get a shot of injection, you are prevented from getting infected from a particular disease. What additionally have you done? By becoming non-infective, you have prevented the spread of infection also. So there is some benefit which goes beyond the personal benefit, right? So there is some benefit which goes beyond the personal benefit. So the so societal benefit is higher than the personal benefit. The third is an example of that health care in itself is a kind of public good. And what is a public good? It is a good which has these two prior pr properties. It is non-excludable and it is non-rival. What do these two things mean? For example, uh, if, if you took a, a pill, then that goes into your stomach. I cannot take that pill. Your consumption affected my consumption. But if there was a signboard or a wall painting in a village and if you were standing and you were viewing that wall painting which said that 108 or 102 is available for referral of pregnant women and if I also stand there, does your viewing hamper my viewing? No. You can also see and I can also see. Your consumption did not affect my consumption. So some health products one of them classically being behavior change communication or information education communication fits into that kind of a quality which is called which is non excludable the sorry non rival non rival the second property is non excludable non excludable means that you cannot deny using a particular good or service by application of some kind of a fee for example you are to you are going on a road you set up a toll tax what do you do by setting up a toll tax? You are denying a person to use that toll, to use that road if he does not pay that service. If he, but what about street lights? If you pay tax and through that tax, this road street light is functioning, I don't pay tax at all. And I also take my car and move out on the, on the road. Does my inability or non-willingness to pay tax hamper my use of that street light? No, you cannot deny me to use that street light by just uh, asking me to pay tax or if I, don't want, uh, if I don't have the money to pay tax at all. So some goods and products in healthcare, these are the classical examples, national defense. You know, so people who are very poor, who cannot pay tax at all, they are also getting the benefits of that security of army which is you know, set up through the tax money. And the fact that they are protected does not mean that I am not protected. I mean, it is everybody's protection. So these are the kinds of policy responses that are needed. And these are things that we have already discussed. So one is you regulate the private sector through taxation, through subsidy, or through doing audits, etc. Or the other is that the government steps in to say that, no, 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 we will provide for everything. We are here, we will set up our own hospitals, our own health centers. You come to us and we will provide you all the services. So one way is let the market allocate resources and you become kind of policeman, steward to say that uh, whether the market functions efficiently or not, we will we'll make sure that there is no supplier induced demand, there is no information asymmetry, there is no heterogeneity or we will try to bridge that heterogeneity by making everybody trained, everybody provides the same quality of care 
either the government does that or the government says okay we can, that's a big job to do we'll just provide healthcare services from our side only that will take care of all these problems supposedly so what happens when the government provides all of us say that government provision is very inefficient we have so many hospitals doctors sitting and nobody goes to those hospitals if there is under utilization of those health facilities then that's not a that's not a good case if you set up hospitals there are no drugs there are no drugs people have to come and pay for the healthcare services they won't come there would be un unmet need unmet need is manifesting into under utilization it is manifesting in terms of welfare loss outputs are less efficiency goes down but we found that the biggest inefficiency of the health system is its underfunding the fact that you do not invest enough in health leads to inefficiency i started off saying that inefficiency is not just having less expenditure efficiency is having the optimal expenditure which leads to optimum level of health this is efficiency or having the best health with optimal set of resources it is not spending less and what we are doing currently is spending less in public health inequitable public health system is also uh, in some in some literature is said to be providing inequitably what is one of the reasons which leads to that in most situations when the public sector provides the public sector provides on a universal basis what happens when you start providing something universally if you start having an ic campaign which says stop smoking okay and supposing there were a b c d rates among the different wealth status levels of in households when you gave this ic campaign who are the ones who are likely to use this ic material who are the ones who are likely to quit smoking cigarettes or i would say the ones who were able to understand your health message and now i again try to motivate you to think on who are the ones who are likely to understand that health message the ones who are educated who are the ones who are likely to be educated more the rich ones the ones who were able to afford education so in effect what you did through this universal provision was you actually increased the inequalities in smoking so as a result sometimes public sector does create those inequalities through universal provision and the problem is there is no very good means test to target a particular uh, service okay so the final to say uh, so so we have problems on both sides we have problems with the private sector we have problems with the public sector there is no one single solution which is perfect but we need to realize that and consider the problems associated with each sector while we talk about provisioning of healthcare services there are a lot of debates currently going on on universal health assurance mission one of the things that people have started to realize is that whatever theoretical knowledge that you have that there are problems of market failure and everything and everything considering that you have such a large private sector already in 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 uh, in existence there's no way you can actually run away from this the problems of those private sector so what you can do is to basically create situations circumstances regulations governance through which you can ensure that the you can reap in more positive effects and try and avoid those uh, those uh, negative effects of private sector so this is just uh, an orientation about the kind of issues that are involved in provisioning of healthcare services how markets function what are the problems in markets and what needs to be considered when you simply think about at one stage privatizing the healthcare or living complete privatization has never been a successful story in any country be it uh, the any anywhere in the world so there are issues and there are problems